With just about two more weeks to go before the start of the IGCC exams Feb March session here in India, there's a lot of speculation going on online. Should the exams be cancelled? Should the exams not be cancelled? Actually, most of this dialogue has already started. I think since November, there was a lot of talk going on, you know, will the 2022 exams uh, take place or not take place ever since there was this talk of Omicron going on, all right? But the most important thing that you need to be paying attention to is what has Cambridge said. CIE website, if you visit that, they have said, this is the latest update, they've said that we plan for exams to go ahead in March 2022 where it is permitted and safe. That's priority. So keeping that in mind, I think they have even ex uh, extended the uh, um, the withdrawal date, the deadline for the withdrawal date, okay, uh, 14th of March is where they've uh, extended it to. And they've said very clearly that uh, if directives from national or local authorities in India mean exams cannot take place, we will switch to school SS grades. That means grades, uh, predicted grades based on uh, the mock exams, any internal assessments that the school must have conducted. So, Depending upon what the national local government in India have uh, said, whether the exams can take place, you know, in school, on school location, um, whether they cannot be or can be, that's more important. Speaking of which, when we look at the latest news, this was Mumbai just news saw from, uh, COVID numbers coming down further to 5,708 with 12 deaths. And all schools will now reopen across Maharashtra from the 24th of January. That's Monday. This is all grades from pi primary to class 12 will be allowed to resume. However, parents and children can opt for online classes. Two more weeks to go, just about two more weeks to go. And we need to really, really, really focus. So in this video, I'm going to share 10 tips, 10 suggestions on how you can make the most from these two weeks of preparation. Watch. <music> Tip number one, prepare till the final day. Make the most of this time that you have, all right? So do not get distracted or digressed by what's going on with these speculations and these debates that's going on. Just prepare as if the exams are going to take place. Make the most of your time, all right? The second tip is that review two subjects every day. These are my suggestions, all right? So maybe you want to review math and English on one day and the next day bio and chemistry. Make such groups, okay? Two, two subjects per day and uh, plan two days per subject. All right, so two subjects per day in a week. That's what, in a week, two days per subject and two subjects per day. One day, this is tip number three, one day you solve papers, okay? And I'm, I'm going to talk about the solving papers in a bit. So one day you solve papers and the second day you reserve it for topical review. So let's say on uh, on a Monday, you are going to do math and English, all right? So, uh, and let's say that particular Monday, you're going to do topical review. What I mean by topical review is that pick out uh, all the three variants from a certain year, let's say 2019, you've picked up, you know, paper four, uh, four one, four two, and four three, and go through the entire paper. Maybe you want to review, let's say, vectors. So pick questions from vectors from all the three variants. That'll be a great way to do topical review across all the three variants from a particular year. That's how you need to prepare. So one day reserved for topical review and another uh, day reserved for solving the paper. That's tip number four. How do you solve paper? When you are going to solve a paper, it means that you've set aside that two hours, 15 minutes or two hours, 30 minutes if you're taking 0580. So make sure that you've actually simulated that kind of a, um, you know, setup. So two and a half hours or two hours, 15 minutes if you're 0607, two hours, 15 minutes without any break. And make sure that you are solving that uh, answering that paper on printed uh, paper. So the question papers are available you can just download the question papers and take a printout of those papers. My point is that if you have a practice of writing within those spaces, you know, so simulate the exam feeling as much as possible. That is what I mean by, you know, solving the papers uh, within the time frame. Give yourself that ex entire time. Don't take any break. Make sure that your calculator is set to press uh, press mode. Make sure that you're using pencil and ruler. Make sure that you are, you know, writing down the all the answers methodically. So that is my tip number four. All right. Tip number five also relates to the solving of papers. So let's say you have set aside two hours, 15 minutes, you're solving 0607, all right, international math paper. When you're solving those papers, read the question paper first, read the, all the questions and start with the questions that you're most confident with. You don't have to start with question number one. You can start with the questions that you're most confident with. Psychologically, it has an advantage. All right. So because what happens is that 
when you start with the questions that you are most confident with, then even the ones, even the ones that, you know, you might not be that confident with, automatically the momentum takes you forward and you'll, you'll be surprised how you're able to solve even the ones that you probably, probably would not be able to solve or you probably had a doubt on that, okay? On the other hand, if you start sequentially and, you know, somewhere, maybe the first or the second question, you come across a question that you are not confident with, that's going to play on your mind. All right. And then eventually, if there was a much simpler question, because that's there in your mind that you haven't solved that question, maybe question number two or three somewhere, you know, you were not very confident. That's there in your mind. It's lingering in your mind, even though you moved on to five and six. And then a seventh question, which probably was something that you were very confident with, even the ones that were simple to you, because that was playing in your mind, you might make some silly errors there. So my tip is when you start solving a paper, start with the questions that you're most confident with. And within the same tip number five, I would say, do not leave any question unanswered, which means that even the ones that you're not confident with, show some working. So even if it's a graph, just make a sketch. If it's a question on something like, you know, circles or triangle, just, just sketch that, you know, show some working because that working will communicate that you're thinking and you will get partial credit for that. All right. Tip number six, Check your work, even the practice. This I'm talking about the practice scenario, the simulator scenario, even when you're practicing, practice as if you are taking the exam. Okay, that's a good way to practice. Practice as if that were the exam, which is why I said, you know, set aside that two hours, 15 minutes or two hours, 30 minutes, no break, you know, press your test board, all the writing material, correct writing material, that means pencils to be used for graphs. Okay, make sure that in that same sense, my tip number six is that, Check your work once or twice before the final submission. Before, you know, you've, you've said, okay, it's uh, two hours, 15 minutes. Set an alarm so that, you know, you'll get that indication. All right. So uh, check your work. Get into the habit of even checking your paper just like you'd have done in the examination setting. Okay. Check your work. So in that same sense, if you're using the TI Inspire, I've already spoken in some of my videos, make use of the problems and pages. That way you can check. And when you're checking your work, it's not just checking what you have done check it against the questions. Sometimes students make mistakes even copying the numbers. You know, suppose, you know, it's it's written something like 37 and you read it as 38, you know, small, small errors because, you know, that time, two hours, 15 minutes, suddenly you're thinking, oh, time's running out and you know, something that looked like 37 there, you wrote 38. So make sure that when you're checking your work, it's not just your work, but check it against the question. Have you copied down the data correctly for each and every question? Okay, so that was tip number six. Tip number seven, after you've done this, you check your work with the marking scheme. Now, marking scheme is also available online. You can download that. And when you're checking it, be a little firm, all right? I won't say strict, be a little firm and make sure that you highlight where you went wrong, what went wrong. Don't just say I made silly mistakes. I don't, you should ask yourself, why did you make the silly mistakes? So that the next time you do something like that, you won't repeat it. So be firm and ask, why did I make something wrong? All right. And if you can get help from your teachers or some, uh, your elder brother, elder sister, make sure that you go ahead and ask uh, for help, especially in those areas where you're making mistakes so that you do not repeat that mistake again. And the next time you're going to do such a simulated uh, examination practice scenario. Tip number eight is don't just discuss. Don't just leave all these things that you want to make sure, like after you've highlighted all the mistakes, don't just leave it at discussions. It needs to be implemented. That's why I said, you know, you take one test and make sure that those corrections, you don't make those mistakes again. So what I mean to say is that don't just leave it at discussion level. It's good to talk to your peers. It's good to talk to elder brother, elder sister. It's good to talk to even some teachers, but with two weeks to go before the exam, it should not just be words. You need to see action. You need to see improvement. Now, my tip number nine and 10 are equally important. So it's not that the ones that I've said earlier, the eight tips, okay, these are super, super, super important and it applies to every exam, not just the IGCC exam. Hear me out very clear, clearly, okay, but don't get confused. So that's why I said, hear me out. You need to practice calming exercises with so much that's happening. When I started by saying, don't get distracted by what's going on in the news. So here are some ideas, whatever suits you. If you want to go ahead and take a walk, all right, if you like playing with your dog, if you like listening to music, if you are someone who's into yoga, you need to do this, okay, for every three hours that you're sitting and studying, maybe you took one exam, just take a 30 minute break. But here's the thing, don't go online, don't surf because you know what, that temptation to go somewhere else or chat with someone. In fact, I'd say don't make a phone call. That 30 minutes is for you to refresh. The most important thing is that you need to be breathing, okay? So if you're taking a walk, 
breathe breathe this is this will help you calm down all right because even at the time of the exam you will realize what worked for you when you come back after those 30 minutes remember it's not just to extend but for every 3 hours that you're working make sure that you take out those 30 minutes go and listen to some music okay don't listen to sad music i don't know i mean you shouldn't be sad and depressed right so listen to some upbeat music some cheerful music that will pump you okay go and uh, take a walk play with your dog but come back after 30 minutes don't indulge in unnecessary chat or uh, uh, even online don't surf you know because that that temptation to go from you know one website to another website you know because sometimes you might think that you know uh, playing games is um, in the video games is relaxing for me um this 30 minutes try to avoid that all right because you know games are something that you know once you get involved in that you know you want to play again you want to play more so try and develop that but remember the most important thing you need to breathe this is meant to calm you down this 30 minute is to calm you down this 30 minute break is meant to calm you down so once do a 30 minute break for every 3 hours that you spend studying clear all right and you might disagree but let me know in the comments okay uh, the tip number 10 my final tip okay you need to rest well yes you got two more weeks to go yes you've done a lot of preparation throughout the two years okay not just this last year the last month okay but how you finish is equally important not just how you started the uh, from ninth grade because IGC is a two year program right not just how you started not just how you went midway but how you finish you need to finish strong so my final tip is that you need to rest well so make sure that you're not spending uh, too much time in the night studying also okay so do not stay too late either in the night trying to study and review or don't stay too late in bed in the next morning because you spend so much time in the night all right so make sure that you rest you need to rest well but at the same time don't spend too late you know either studying and reviewing because sometimes what happens in the night when you're doing that there's lots of temptation to just get distracted some people prefer studying early in the mornings while others prefer studying late in the nights. Either way, you need a good night's rest because sometimes, you know, what happens is students come and tell me they were up till 3 a.m. and 4 a.m. And literally, actually, sometimes they can't function well the next day because the mind has not been rested. Your mind needs to be rested also. You need a good night's sleep. So make sure that your mind is well rested. If the next day you're not able to function because, you know what, let's say the next day was the exam, okay? And the 0607 paper is two hours 15 minutes like 135 minutes your mind needs to be as active and alert from first minute minute number one to minute number 135 as effective and as alert from minute number one to minute number 135 so make sure that your mind is rested so even during these final days the last two weeks get in that habit not the habit of staying up till 4 a.m but making sure that you do not plan that you do not plan to stay too late into the night or not too late even in the mornings, okay? Not like 10 a.m. and 11 a.m. you're still in bed. Don't do that and don't use the excuse that you were up till 4 a.m. and therefore you were in bed till 10 a.m. So get into the habit of making sure that your mind and your body are well rested every day so that each day's preparation is effective. And this is what we're talking about, the days of preparation. You've got two weeks to go and you need to finish strong. So these are my 10 suggestions to make sure that your days of preparation, the last two weeks of preparation before the exam will be effective. All the very best. <laughs>